that's the real side of content marketing, just genuinely getting people's attention and sharing knowledge. So we are live, Talking Alpacas Take One. And action. Hello, hello, and uh, welcome to this week's episode of Talking Alpacas. Uh, hi, Carlo, how are you? Hello, Steph. All good. How are you? I'm okay. Thank you very much. Uh, today's guest is uh, Matthew Zamit. Hi, Matthew. All good? Hello, hello. How are you? All right. Not bad, not bad. So, uh, Matthew, uh, first of all, thanks for being here and thanks for taking the time to, to have a conversation with us. Can you introduce yourself a bit and uh, tell us exactly what you do? Mm, good question. So, a bit, <laughs> so, I do a bit of everything. So, just, so I manage customer experience, digi- the digital customer experience at a telecommunication company. Okay. Then on the side, I have my personal marketing consultancy. That's called Know Your Social. I teach digital marketing at university, at master's level. And uh, I'm a startup mentor at a startup, startup incubator. So I'm a bit of everything. So I, yeah. I was listening to, to Philip Sultan episode today, and it's a bit, it's a bit of a similar <laughs> thing. Not, not knowing how to choose, probably I don't know if I have commitment issues or, or what. Yeah. So. Exactly. I, I love to keep myself busy. So. Yeah, quite busy. I was thinking, yes. <laughs> how are you? How are you keeping up with the the lecture lectures now that obviously are you doing online lectures? That was a very interesting learning. So the good thing about it was that I was able to do it in my own time. So I was uh-huh. I was recording lectures in the evening most of the time. So I had the time to prepare for it. Uh, I think actually the students actually liked it because they could pause and take notes. They uh-huh. could ask questions later. So. I think sure. it was an, overall it was a very positive experience. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, having like a lesson there, you, they can go back on it as well if they need anything. Yeah. I miss the interaction, <laughs> so, of course, the class interaction. But then what we yeah, did, yes, we yes. opened the we opened the Slack channel where we can chat. Yeah. But that's good. That's very the, good. The things you find out during a pandemic, I guess. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so apart from teaching, how are you been keeping busy during this self isolation times? Yeah, so working. For, I love working from home. So I've been working from home now permanently for a few months, I think. Uh, so I love it actually. Um, I'm trying to finish my my apartment. Hopefully, I'll move in in June or July. And uh, obviously, to add to the business, I'm I'm building a, a Chrome extension, which I should be launching very soon. Okay. So you'll right. hear about it very soon. Related to marketing. I won't be I'm guessing. related to marketing. Yes, I won't be saying anything. Beta okay. should launch in a couple of weeks' time, so probably by the time this episode is out, the beta would have been out. We'll, we'll look forward to it, for sure. So let's um, dive into a bit the topic of today, which is uh, mainly um, content marketing and video-related marketing uh, solutions. Um, tell us more about content marketing and its relation to video. Mm-hmm. So for me, content marketing is what the internet has become. Now. So we've all, we're all constantly scrolling Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. So it's basically the the branding side of marketing. So there are two sides of marketing. There's brand yeah. marketing and there's direct marketing. So direct mm-hmm. marketing is purely related to closing the sale. And then there's the brand marketing. So content yeah. marketing is related to the to the branding side, to the getting pe- getting people to know you, getting people getting people's attention and getting their trust to eventually if you want sell something. But yeah. that that's a crucial part is the getting their attention and their trust. So how does content marketing relate to these days and uh, maybe how users um, interact with the content that they find online? Ah, so if we, so one video has increased drastically in content marketing. So if you're like me, you don't have the patience to read long articles anymore. So if you're looking at articles, you probably just read the headlines and that's it. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm finding myself spending much more time on YouTube and much more time on Instagram. So I don't know mm-hmm. if it's the same, but especially YouTube, I'm spending, I'm finding myself spending much more time on YouTube. And instead of going to Google, I'm actually ending up going to YouTube for a, for a search to, to try it. So and then again, most of the, most of the results which come up are from either companies doing some form of content marketing or mm-hmm. from people wanting to share their knowledge. So that's the real side of, of content marketing, just genuinely getting yeah. people's attention and sharing knowledge. If I'm not mistaken, I think um, YouTube has become uh, the second most popular search engine now, right after Google. So uh, like it's, and it's specialized on video only. So like, you know, it's, it goes to show kind of how video has taken over, so to speak in, in, in general terms. 
Yeah, exactly. It is the second most most popular search engine. I think they have twenty percent of search engine traffic, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so mm -hmm. Google over overall or the Google's platform. So between Google itself, YouTube, Maps, yeah. and what I'm missing, I'm missing something else. It's around ninety-seven percent. But I think YouTube, if I'm not mistaken, has around twenty percent of that of that share. Personally, I found myself using YouTube so much more when I bought a TV with the app mm. uh, included. Mm. It's so yeah, it's easily, true. you know, when you just switch off from work and you start, you know, maybe you start following some channels that you like for topics that you like and you just yeah. watch. And that's probably the, the, the other interesting shift. So we're no longer really watching TV. So mm. I personally, I never watch actual TV. So my parents yeah. watch TV, but I never actually watch TV, I, I watch things I want to see, and that's the difference, I think. Now consumers are in control of what yeah. they want to see. We're not just switching on, opening channel one and hoping to get something which we like. We're actually looking for what we like, and if you like, I have my watch list, my watch <laughs> later on, on YouTube, which is never ending. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so if you are to, to mention maybe some advantages of content marketing, and how mm -hmm. does it compare to more traditional marketing? Yeah, so the main one is, is this is gaining people's attention and trust over time. So if you consider, consider it as a loop, you first get people's attention and then they trust you, but they cannot trust you before you get their attention, before they know who you are. So through content marketing, they sort of get to know who you are. So of course, there's there's a whole spectrum of it. So there's the yeah. blog side, which is very, very high level, but then there's a traditional YouTube vlogger side, which there's a detail of what's happening in the background. So many, mm -hmm. many CMOs, chief marketing officers, which I follow, uh, show what the, what's happening at home and their families, so what's happening in the office, behind the scenes. So in that way, I, I get to know who the people actually are. And that sense becoming more personal, I think. It's not it's not a brand which is, which is a faceless brand. It's a brand which is showing people. The brand is becoming people. So uh, with the popularization of, of social media, uh, brands and consumers are, are sort of closer than ever together. Um, how did this affect companies and the way they affect their, their marketing? Um, do you think there's a sort of shift to more content-based marketing or is it... Yeah, so the, yeah, the first bit is, a bit is, of course, it's a learning curve, how to do, how to do a new kind of... Uh, it's new, it's been new for 10 years, but let's call it still new, <laughs> still new. Uh, how to do the new kind of market. It's not just a big budget TV ad and that's it. Yeah. It's a TV ad which then flows into episodes, which then flows into blogs, which then flows into posts, which then, then, then there's the interview, there's the behind the scenes of what's mm -hmm. happening. Uh, and that's, that's, the, that's the new learning curve. Of course, I've been seeing many people putting their faces behind their brand and I love what you guys are doing. I think we were discussing we were discussing what you're doing. I think last August when was it? Mm. And yeah, I yeah. love it that you're actually that you're actually <laughs> starting this. So, and, and the way it happens is I might not need your service now, but when I need your when I'll be needing your service, I know I sort of know you and trust you already. So yeah. I won't even be looking for other people because because I know you, even if you're not the best. I know you guys and I and I'll just come to you guys. And that's the yeah. way it works. So but the knowing has become quite different uh, i don't i don't know carl if you want to speak about tiktok now because i've heard you mention tiktok <laughs> with, with everyone else <laughs> well if you want to say a couple of words why not no again tiktok so how i i don't see tiktok as a main channel for for brands to be honest especially for consumer brands but one is the it's learning ground for many teenagers let's say let's say tiktok is for teenagers although the age groups are shifting yeah but two by looking at what they're doing on tiktok we can know what's going to happen in five years time when mm. these people leave tiktok and they grow up on tiktok but they're expecting the same thing so what happens yeah. when these teenagers move from tiktok to instagram they'll probably expect something similar to what they have on tiktok so okay. can we as a, as a brand can we as content marketers learn what's happening on tiktok if not try to market directly on TikTok, because I don't think TikTok is a, is, a, is a good place to close the sale, but you can do it to, again, back to my original argument, to, to get people to know you, to get people mm -hmm. to, to interact with you as a person, not as a brand, exactly. as a person. That's the important thing. For sure. Um, a, a lot of, of content marketing, especially in the video side, are, are for example, a lot of how-to videos and advice, um, uh, people giving advice about what they do. Um, one might think that it's a bit sort of counterproductive because you're sort of spilling the beans on, on how, you know, on your sort of your industry seekers. Do you think of it that way or, or is it more of a 
it's better to give advice so then you you establish yourself as a sort of expert uh, so again there's a spectrum of how to do things my favorite way of doing things is to give give it out for free mm -hmm. and what, again i'm going to repeat myself what happens if you give it out for free people will trust you and you'll get people's attention so mm -hmm. one thing which i loved seeing a couple of weeks ago which happened from this coronavirus situation is a local company which uh, a local juice company, let's not, let's not say the name, <laughs> um, who have created episodes where they, show, where they show how do they do their juice, what are the ingredients in their juices. Are they actually giving away the recipe? Probably. Mm -hmm. will, I go, will I go to do the juice myself instead of buying it? Definitely not. I'll still yeah. buy it. I, I actually wanted to buy it more once I saw how they, how mm -hmm. they did it. I, became, I, yeah. became even, I wanted the juice even more. So, so that, that's the, people won't take, won't, won't take the the plants themselves do it themselves so we're all very mm -hmm. busy so most of the time we're always looking for someone else to do it for us and an expert yeah. to do it for us mm -hmm. i mean true. i guess i i guess uh, as you're saying the difference between an expert and uh casual goers are skills so i mean you can say what what skills you require to do something but if you don't have them you know you, you're gonna trust the expert i guess yeah, yeah. okay so content marketing 101 Let's say someone that that is listening right now wants to build a real content marketing strategy. What would be the steps to do? So I would definitely start with what is your objective? So mm -hmm. don't just do content marketing for the sake of content marketing. Is it mm -hmm. brand awareness? Is it to collect leads? Is it just to grow your brand? It could be just to grow your brand, but make sure you know why you're doing it. Because if it's if it's to grow your brand, you won't be measuring daily what's happening because you won't see the brand the brand impact in day one. Exactly. But you might want to to do it to collect leads or to to generate sales. And that's in that sense, then you can measure. The mm -hmm. first thing is see what your objectives are, and then the important next step for me, and I'm speaking from a very strategic level, which I like to stay at. The next step would be who's your audience and what do, what do they want. So what are your audience already saying on, on social media? What are your, your audience already asking you? What do they want to hear? How can you position yourself as, the, as, as an expert, let's call that word, since you mentioned it, as an expert for your audience? And, and then it depends. It depends on, on uh, where you want to go. So then if it's a big, big production, like you guys do, so what is the budget and what are the resources? But the budget can be simply buying a a good microphone, a good camera, mm -hmm. and that's it, and you do it on your own. Or it can be a three-day shoot where you where you have a, a full-blown TV ad, which then you break it down in different sections. Or you might want to do episodes. So what's the budget and what are your, your resources? Mm -hmm. And then it's what you guys are great at, <laughs> uh, scripting, storyboarding, and even if you're doing if you're doing it yourself. I always like to jot a couple, a couple of notes when when uh, when I'm sick, when I'm going to, to be on video or on or on or a podcast. So it's it's always good to have some form of an idea of what you're saying rather than just blabbing away and uh, not not getting not getting anywhere. For sure. Uh, so the, those would be the main the main parts. Then you obviously you record what you want to record, and then starts the, the difficult part. <laughs> this part this part is where many people don't don't get to. So it's the content calendar. So planning what you're going to post. And where? So, if you have a video, are you going to post it on Facebook, on YouTube? Can you repurpose it for as a podcast? So, mm -hmm. for example, one thing which you guys can do, you can record these podcasts as videos and post the videos on YouTube and on and on LinkedIn. Can you create articles from these podcasts? Can you, so that's called repurposing. So, how can you repurpose yep. and and what you and where are you going to distribute it? And probably the last thing is measuring what you're trying to do. So again, as I said in the beginning, if you're just doing an, an awareness campaign, probably you won't be measuring daily because awareness grows over time. But if you're trying to get sales, of course you can measure. I, I don't like just to measure the likes. So likes yeah, are yeah. vanity, vanity met, metrics exactly. and just, uh, just numbers for it for the sake of it. But, but what things can you measure? So that's overall. I think when it comes to, to kind of feedback or like how the audience is reacting to it, you should look at the qualitative side. Exactly. So what are they saying about it? Are you getting feedback? Um, are you getting comments? Are you getting... So it's more the... the if you if, Again, if you're doing it as a brand awareness kind of thing and to grow your brand, which you should do, um, especially in this time where people are a bit more sensitive, not wanting to get adverts because 
some people are a bit more limited with money, etc. So it's probably worth to grow your brand and to look at these kind of things. What comments are you getting? What feedback are you getting? Whether you're getting new connections on LinkedIn, which you might use in the future. Yeah. So that might be something to measure. In fact, we had a similar um, experience recently. Um, we posted a post um, on, on Instagram and we sponsored it as well. It was um, basically we photoshopped actual alpacas in our office and we said, you know, like two weeks we're working remotely and the alpacas have returned to our offices. And when we sponsored it, 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 it blew up. We got, uh, I think, close to 5k uh, likes. Um, obviously, we were super happy with the result, but that, even though it went viral in inverted commas, it didn't really give us much else. So just because you have sort ah, of a popular... get... Yeah, but it put, put, but I saw that post, you should say, but <laughs> it, was, it was really good. But, so it, it might not have gotten results now, yeah. but again, yeah. it, it, it puts you in the frame of mind that Mark are the right people for, for my video. So when I need that video next time, I, I won't even look, honestly, I won't even look, I'll just come to you guys. <laughs> and and that's, that, that's the new way of looking at things. And, and again, you sponsored the right post. So you didn't sponsor a post which says, we do videos, come, come get, send us an email now, whatever. You sponsored the right post which is brand related and which, which again, it's a bit more long term rather than wanting to close it now and wanting to interrupt people now. Yeah, it was on Instagram. It was part of the flow. It was a good flow as part of my my news feed. So it, it it looked like any other any other post. So that's why it, it makes sense. So I'm not an anti adverts because in the VM might have sounded like I'm I'm anti adverts. I'm I'm anti adverts which which stop you from what you're doing and which are out of context. Mm -hmm. Sure. So again, back to the TikTok argument. If you want to do TikTok, you need to repurpose your stuff for TikTok. If you're doing for Instagram, sure. you need to repurpose for that platform. So you need to respect the platform. What are some current media marketing trends that you're noticing? And what's your opinion about them? Yeah, so as we've been saying, so I've been seeing quite a few brands going into, into content and especially into video and especially into non-produced video. So just the simple thing of going in front of a camera, etc. But they're also seeing the the big productions showing the behind the scenes or showing episodic things which were happening so maybe a big video which is broken down into smaller smaller stuff which lead one into the other so this is something which which has been growing quite quite lately um, mm -hmm. and again so like what i mentioned with the juice company so showing showing the how do we do this but which won't take away any sales i actually want to buy more from you so um do you have any tips that you can give to companies that are currently struggling with their marketing my main tip is always just start don't overthink it and just start so if you overthink it you'll never do anything so just yeah. just just decide what you want to do so whether it's a video a podcast a big production i don't know decide what you want to do and just start and you'll get feedback as you go mm -hmm. along so again i love what you guys are doing just uh, just uh, zoom call and recording it and putting it on spotify yeah. so just start and, uh, i mean at the end of the day it's, it's a journey i guess i mean and I'm sure you're learning a lot while you're doing it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we talked a lot about um, several different ways you can sort of uh, go around content marketing. Uh, given the current situation, what should a company be doing right now to like sort of stay relevant and make sure it's not forgotten? Uh, so it's purely at this point, it's purely being being um, genuine. Mm -hmm. and just purely being purely being themselves just not trying to sell too much again it's yeah. very currently it's we need to be a bit more careful of how much we're selling versus versus what we're whether we're trying to help or, or anything so i would be very much very careful rather than to sit, sell and to close sales so i'm seeing quite For a sure. posts on especially on linkedin where just just being human so just mm -hmm. telling what's happening telling your struggles how is it going with working from home what are your people struggling with? Um, if you're not, if you're struggling to get clients, just say that, um, and hope and hoping to produce something useful again, like you guys are doing. So I'm mm -hmm. sure you can't fill in at this point, but you're, you're you're trying to build something useful and you're trying to build a brand asset to to be able to use in the future. So yeah, I mean, as as you said, we we, we can't film at the moment, and which is mostly what we do. So obviously, we struggled a bit with um, adjusting to to this new lifestyle so to speak but obviously there are ways in which you can keep producing content and as you said you keep giving to to your audience and make sure it's valuable as well shoot out to our leader sean <laughs> <laughs> kind of i think in these situations you need um you know someone who leads to the right um, direction so mm -hmm. 
Yes, again, it's a, it's a very good point, Carlos. So probably as company leaders and as leaders in general, probably apart from what's happening externally, we need to manage what's happening, what's happening also internally because many people are struggling with work. So I love working from home, as I said, but mm -hmm. I don't have any kids. I don't have any distractions. Mm -hmm. So some of my friends have three kids and they're trying to manage between the three kids and working <laughs> and cooking and cleaning and mm. trying to keep the kids entertained while having video calls all the time. So there, there is a struggle. And then there's, there's also the question of what will happen, how, where will, will we back, go back to the office? Will we go back to the office? Mm -hmm. there, there are these, these, these tiny human things, which, which will make a big difference at, at yep. this point. So it's not just about experience. It's about the internal culture of the company. You know? mm. For sure. Have you seen sure. the Have you seen the Twitter CEO that said that people can yeah. work from home forever? Yeah, and, and definitely from home. Yeah. 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 Again, I, I don't think that's that's right for every company, but exactly. If, if you can manage to work like that, why not? So, mm -hmm. and I think this this is a lesson which we which we're learning as a, in, in general is that some things which we thought never could have been done are are now being done. So. Exactly. And uh, the, the, what uh, the, the thing which has been going around, the tree plant transformation suddenly became in a, a three month digital transformation. And we have to adapt very quickly our plans which we've been working yeah. on for three years and, and fit them in into three months. <laughs> for sure. It's like it's, it's, it's pushing us and companies as well to sort of keep pushing the boundaries and, and sort of challenge the status quo. Can you name, obviously, I mean, I think you, you, you do your daily research, so to speak, and, and you keep yourself up to date. Um, can you name some resources for, for people who are interested to follow these marketing, these emerging marketing trends? Yeah, so I mainly read books and I've been shifting to audio books recently. So, but if I can mention probably three books. So the first one is, I'm looking at my bookshelf now, so behind me. So the first one is, uh, this is marketing by Seth Golden. It's a classic I've read three times already in two years. Uh, and then there's Shoe Dog. Shoe Dog is the history of Nike. So how the company was built and gives you the background of, how, of, of their struggles they had. And the third one would be The Infinite Game by Simon Sinek, which gives you, which gives you a different frame of mind and it's really good in this, in this context. So Peter Gregg of Brand Wagon suggested it to me. The Infinite Game gives you, gives you the frame of mind that, okay, we're, we're struggling, but your business is a, is a long-term thing. You're not just living for the next one month. So what is one month compared to the next 20 years? And mm -hmm. it's thinking about that. And then it's about following people on Instagram. So two people which I usually follow are Dave Gerhardt, which is a CMO of Privy now, David Cancel, CEO of Drift. Um, I don't know, there's quite a few people <laughs> there which I follow on LinkedIn and on yeah. YouTube. Nice. And, and, and the, the, this information comes in subliminated because right? you're just scrolling exactly. and you don't even know that you're reading it. So. Exactly. I, I follow Seth Godin as well, but I still have to read his, his book. What are a few of your predictions with regards to marketing and advertising for the future? Uh, so I think, so one, you have to just to see how long do we take to get out of this coronavirus situation because it can take a few months, it can take a year to get a vaccine. So it, we'll have to see what the, what impact will it have on Your bet. companies. My bet, I think it will be with us till at least the end of the year. Mm -hmm. And we'll have to wait till summer next year for a proper vaccine. So, but I think we'll have to adapt. But I'm, yeah. I'm taking the most pessimistic scenario. Yeah. But I prefer to be pessimistic at this of point. Course. So if Fair it enough. stays with us for the next year, we'll have to adapt, have to see what happens to budgets. Mm -hmm. And probably we'll see more companies going into into content to see more companies going into um, less produced stuff and more more genuine stuff so probably we'll be seeing more the real people more the, mm -hmm. the human side of every company probably do you think it's it's a sort of uh, step back or you, you think like that that genuity is 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 like that authenticity is something that people should will look out for so to speak I think it's 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 going back to 50 years ago, when when you used to buy your stuff from the grocer down the road, the grocer knew mm -hmm. uh, knew you by name. You knew the grocer by name. <laughs> yeah. You you just walked in. Uh, the grocer knew what you what you usually buy, whether it's <laughs> skimmed milk or not. It's, yeah. it's going back to the one to one interaction, going back to the per being personal. Yeah, and another book on this topic is Thank You Economy by Gary. Gary Vaynerchuk. So Thank You Economy talks about this, about going back to the one to one. So going back about the 
replying to every message you receive on social, hearing your customers, rather than just pushing, 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 trying to sell yeah. the time. So this brings us to the final question, and it's a question that we ask, uh, I think, nearly all our guests till now, yeah. um, mainly because we're fans of the, the, the medium. What have you recently watched that really impressed you? <laughs> Beyond Tiger King, you mean? <laughs> that is no. a, a phenomenon. No. I, I watched it in like two days. I, I just no. got stuck. I only, got, I only managed to get to episode two, so I couldn't continue. <laughs> I was like, what on earth is this? Um, no, I just finished watching season three of Westworld. It's mm -hmm. brilliant. It's brilliant, season three of Westworld. Uh, I'm watching again um, Star Wars The Clone Wars. That's an animated series of Star oh. Wars. I'm starting it again. There are like seven, seven seasons. Right? Yeah, I just finished up. I haven't watched last last season. I'm I haven't starting either. it from. I'm starting it from season one, so then then I get to season seven. <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm watching um, the last dance by by um, well, it, it's about Michael Jordan, and and it takes you back a while. You know, it takes you back to the '90s. So because he was a really big <laughs> figure back then. <laughs> okay, remind me. I, I I was watching. What's it called? Inside, inside the Bill's brain was it's a documentary about oh, Bill Gates. Oh yes, it's, really good. it's a lot. It's, it's amazing. I still have to finish it. It's, it's on Netflix. It. It's really, really good. So yeah, I mean, uh, thank you for being <laughs> with us. Thank you very much. I think it was a very, very productive episode. I hope yes, listeners sure. <laughs> took notes because we, we, you know, Matthew spread a bit of knowledge. Yeah, so, for sure. Thank you for that. <laughs> thank you very much, Matthew. We hope to see you thank soon. Thank you guys. Um, I enjoyed it. Yes, feel free to connect on LinkedIn. Where can people find you? Exactly. Come on, promote yourself. You can go to... No, I don't want to promote myself, but if you want to connect, <laughs> I'm on LinkedIn. Uh, I'm everywhere, but I'm mostly on LinkedIn. Uh, just go there, look for me, Matthews on me. I'll be very happy to connect. And and it works, guys, because that's how we met Matthew. So, I mean, yep. <laughs> send a message to Matthew and you're actually going to meet. Even maybe during a pandemic, I don't know. <laughs> maybe, yeah, maybe. <laughs> Great. So, Steph, um, I'll see you next week. Well, see you next week. Well, kind of, kind <laughs> yeah, of. So call every day, but you know, <laughs> I'll see you in this setup next week. And yeah. um, don't forget to stay tuned. Follow us on Spotify, um, Apple Podcast, and also LinkedIn, Instagram, and Facebook. So, shall we call it? Yes, let's call it. And that's a wrap. <laughs>